Okay, this is. Oh God, I don't. I'm, I'm gonna probably butcher this, but the. I've never heard of this name, by the way. Um, the Nayo, 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 Nay, Na, Oh yeah, Na Oh yeah, Na Oh yeah. I'm gonna do it several ways, and then I'll just pick the one that's. <laughs> Nayo, yeah, Nayo, Na Oh yeah, No. Oh God. All right, this is the. Naoya, na, na, oya, na. How's it going over there? Naoya, na, o, na. Na, na, um, the naio, 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 um, the naio, um, the naio, naio, naio. Okay, hi guys, and welcome once again to episode. 249 of Risk <laughs> Now. Actually, I think I think we're approaching a year now. I so think August was the first one. August was the I, first I'm one. I'm pretty sure. The man, the myth, the legend, Mark from Long Island Watch is uh, with us again. How are you, sir? Doing same as always. Doing fine. How are you? Good, good. Um, had a bit of a flood in the apartment, but we... Oh, man. We, we sorted everything, it out. Everything mopped up? Yeah, we had to have fan industrial fans for the dampness yeah, it was a nightmare thankfully the war room is okay but uh okay that's all that's all that matters yeah ex- exactly and the watch collection and the, is dry. yeah yeah i was rushing putting it in a bag ready to leave <laughs> <laughs> um so today oh and by the way guys uh quick reminder if you missed the last episode i'll put it here da, 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 da. right there there you go the last episode so make sure because uh, obviously this is our monthly show uh today we're going to discuss uh our favorite uh top well it'll be top 20 in total but 10 each yeah. new releases and half of them we go through very quickly attempt to yeah <laughs> attempt to we will <laughs> We'll probably do this another one at the end of the year, I think, because right. that's when we did it last year. Because yep. is it just me or is it everyone is putting out a ton of watches? New, yeah. Yeah. Well, watches and wonders just happened. Right? right. That was that usually ran almost in conjunction with Basel, but Basel didn't ha- you know, isn't happening anymore. Uh, so so that happened. And uh, that's when a lot of the boys and girls release uh their pieces yeah but doesn't it seem that there are more releases than i've ever ever before or is that just me i think i don't know maybe it's pandemic releases pandemic really <laughs> you know they're bored everyone's been cooped yeah. up they got nothing to do <laughs> yeah, right yeah 50 watches yeah <laughs> exactly um now i i have something very special to show you oh boy yeah because uh, last time you had your hoodie check right Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to come back, you know, full, oh, full, look at you. full force. This goes very nice. Goes all the way around. That I got the column wheel under my arm. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that's so cool. Uh, the escapement is on my uh, lower kind of abdomen here, um, <laughs> and it c- goes all the way around. So uh, I actually did this last year, but I thought, but I was so inspired by you. I was like, why don't I actually wear it? You know. There you go. So of course, there you go. You are a watch. Yeah. Um, you are what you eat. Exactly. So, guys, check out the store. Nice little plug for my own store. No, of course, uh, please. Uh, down below, there's plenty. I've got the mug. Look, I've got the mug. Even. What Did movement it? is that based off of? Do you know? It's. I think it's a Valju. Would it? Okay. Uh, whatever Valju has the the column wheel. The column wheel. This is it. Cool. I did a limited run last year in white. It was a reverse. Uh-huh. So the. Okay. And they sold out, so I thought, oh, then I've added this as like a permanent one, so you can buy it cool. whenever. You know, I was when you, I was trying to figure out what you were wearing. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw the logo, and I'm like, what is this? These circles? Now I see their screws. Mm. Very nice. Mm. Thank you. You are all geeked out and nerded out. Thank you very much. Oh, speaking of geeks and nerds, yeah, yeah. So I'll do my t-shirt check. 
authentic engineer 100 percent genius i love that <laughs> yes uh yeah, innovative creative problem solver because i am indeed a true engineer nice born and raised education wise everything perfect turned watch seller perfect <laughs> well actually i'm so glad because there's some serious engineering going on in today's show so please wristwatch check oh so i thought it was only appropriate so i wore it if I had an, another favorite release for 2020, right. it would be the Prospect Spring Drive GMT that I was able to pick up. Um, so I thought it was only appropriate. And then I just released these. Oh my uh, God. Last week. This is the Islander Monster. Um, oh, I saw that on, yeah, on the Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. I did five different colorways. This is the white and blue. Um, so this is kind of my favorite release that I'm that I've done so far of the year, even though the year is still young. Um, so like every time we talk, you bring out a new watch. Yeah, there's a lot more coming. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Congrats, man. That that is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what's the size on the the monster? It's a stand. It's forty forty two a monster case. Right, right, right. Perfect. Which, uh, and I went mostly with Gen One markers, and it's got a little flair to it. Nice. But you know, m mostly retains most of the monster DNA. My uh, wristwatch check is also themed because I reached out to Moya, uh, Moya Jewelers. Mm -hmm. Massive shout out to Moya as well because they're they're uh, more kind of luxury. They're like an official ID yep. for uh, Amiga. All these big brands i buy and sell to them all the time my my audience knows this actually i just sold them a watch um and uh it was very difficult because then they sent me this and this is the speedmaster the new one with the coaxial mm. nice nice new for this year so apparently they're flying off the shelves so i don't know how much time i've got with this but it's bringing back so many emotions and That's, yeah yeah i hear you oh it's very nice i love the new bracelet um, okay. So yeah, you know, I have to mention the bracelet because they've they've it's the five link and it tapers. I mean, look at the tiny little clasp, and then it yeah. goes big. It just oh, it's really fluid. Looks nice. It replaces the eighteen sixty one. Uh, so that, that after five decades, so this one the three eight six one is basically the, the Lemania eighteen seventy three ba based on that. Uh, but then with gotcha. the coaxial. So, aside from that, I mean, there are a whole bunch of new versions out. Right. This is the Hesselite one. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So this is very, very faithful. On the outside, you wouldn't be able to tell it's the newest thing. So it's pretty cool. Well, enjoy it. I am. I am. Enjoy it while you have yeah. it. <laughs> and I've also got the old one. They they were so kind to to lend, so I can I can compare. You should you should wear both. <laughs> yeah, put it this way. <laughs> oh my god yeah so guys if you want me to do a comparison video or uh something of that nature if i have time um and if they might have been sold already i will try okay but let me know your thoughts if you're interested in seeing that i don't is is it overkill it has the speed of been i don't know i mean the watch itself is over is has been oh done, yeah done again for five decades so yeah what's but what's one more yeah but does it matter if do people want to know my opinion on it i don't know that's of course yeah <laughs> Everyone wants the opinion of a guy wearing a watch movement on his shirt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. Mark number 10. Okay, so my number 10 uh, would be the Marathon GSAR Arctic Dial Edition. Um, the GSAR is the 41 millimeter search and rescue automatic. Uh, with a well, right now, I guess they're all Salida. They've all moved over to Salida now. Mm. Um, so the black dial GSR has been easily, you know, kind of the, almost their number one selling watch for years. Last year they did the mid size and the white dial, and now this year they decided to do the full size and the white dial. So 41 millimeter white dial, and I've said it before, I'll say it again. There's not enough white dial divers in the world, um, and they were met with extreme. A lot of people were looking for them. Mm. Um, immediately sold out in the first batch that came in from Switzerland. Um, and they are trying to restock as fast as they can. But something about the white and the black and the tritium, because um, yeah. you know these are all tritium-based watches, uh, it just kind of works. Looks really nice. Uh, not a very far-reaching idea to just change the dial color of the watch, but I feel like it made such such a difference. Yeah. And maybe, I don't know if it's a possibility, maybe they'll do it in PVD one day. I think that would be, Ooh, that would really be cool. Yeah. That would really set it off. Yeah. But for now, 
just white dial steel. I love the little Looks pop real. of red with the second hand. Oh yeah, they yeah. do. They really do a great job. They really, you know, they did it really nice. Yeah. I mean, so like I said, it's a it's a very simple notion. It's a simple idea, mm -hmm. but it just works. Yeah. I, yeah. Fantastic. They're so utilitarian. They're, they're just all about getting the job done. Yeah, that's pretty much what it's for. I, I guess I should try to mention the price whenever I can. I, they're about twelve hundred bucks on rubber, and uh, a little bit more on the steel. That's very reasonable, uh, and the co yeah. yeah, the quality is always top top notch. Swiss movement, Swiss made, Swiss automatic movement, Swiss made, and tritium too. Yeah. So yeah, good watch. Fair enough. Great choice. Great choice. TGVs number ten. My number ten. This is this is very easy actually. It's it's the Casio A. 171 and basically essentially it's a round aw158 or uh, 168 if, if you prefer uh, they've come out with uh, gold and steel toned versions and i think there's one on a mesh now i could not find anything about this watch because uh, casio they they put out a, a video about a month ago all right with these kind of rather stoic looking models kind of prancing about with the watch right and i'll, I'll okay. play a clip and then don't post anything on their website nothing there's a little bit of talk about it about it in the forums that i could find but essentially they're not reinventing the wheel but i do believe that they are kind of filling in this entry level nicely and that and i i have an inkling that they're going to start doing more analog stuff and more claiming that entry level can as especially as Sony, yeah, Sony, sure. especially as yeah. So Seiko, um, yeah, goes up market. It's very nice. I just think it's it's a really making it round. I mean, it it's it's such an easy idea, but yet it really makes such a difference. Exactly. In the, watch. the only criticism, yeah. um, and there is a solution to this, uh, is it's still got that crappy old led backlight i wish you know <laughs> i wish they'd fix that but you can mod there, there, there's a, like a modding community for seiko's um uh, right casio <laughs> <it again>. yeah. <laughs> that's okay you got seiko on the brain. yeah for for casios uh so you can find like um little mods on on etsy right. and stuff to, to 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 fix the led so it's not the end of the world i yeah. i i agree with you it looks pretty nice i like it i like it it's funny though how you like you said you know a little video comes out but yet yeah you can't find any mention of I can't, it yeah no one's talk, no one's written about it there's not nothing on their website i mean hopefully by the time this goes out perhaps they do it's, you know it's amazing it's probably half the people that are on an a168 which is like probably half a million people are probably gonna buy one yeah exactly exactly <laughs> maybe they know and they do, they do, they're just like eh. you know yeah yeah I, I get it i get it mark's Mark. number nine, number nine. So my number nine is a brand that's kind of uh, almost new to me. Um, it's uh, from Ming. Oh my god! And look at this. Uh, yeah, I've never really. Yeah, you know, I've come across them on forums and stuff. But I never really delved into it, and I really like. First of all, the design is amazing. It's like it's unlike anything I would say that's that's out there. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful watch. Yeah. What really struck me about not only the release but the company mm. is that you know, in their About Us page is really awesome. It's like six people um, spread throughout the globe. Like one's a designer, one's a photographer, mm -hmm. one's a financier, one's a business guy. Um, and they come right out and say, hey, we don't manufacture anything. We make them all in Switzerland at various factories. But their lead man, his name is Ming. Mm -hmm. But their watches apparently are always a sellout. It's meaning they always sell out. Yeah. Uh, as soon as they're announced, they are pre-sold, sold through. Um, this particular one, this one in particular was uh, 38 millimeter, Ooh. has a little, um, what are those, 7001, those peso, or I probably can't pronounce it right, those little hand wind movements. Right, um, right, right, right. And, you know, uh, I think like four or 5,000 Swiss francs, and it's almost parity to the dollar. Um, so not a cheap watch. But just a really cool looking, really nice watch that is, like I said in the beginning, unlike anything yeah. that's out there. It's very already. modern. I love the. Uh, yes. I love those lugs. Yeah. It, Isn't those cool how they flare? Yeah. yeah. It, you, you know, it, there's something slightly Star Trek about it. I don't know what it is. It's something futuristic about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yep. I could see Captain Picard wearing this. You're so beautiful. See? You're a cutie full of charm. <laughs> So I think it's definitely a brand that, you know, 
will get my attention, I think, more in the future. Ming, yeah. I, I've never heard of it. Never heard of yeah. it. Yeah. That's cool, right? Very cool. I love the uh, the exhibition case back and the. I'm presuming yep. this is. Oh, yeah, obviously it's manual wind. Yes. Um, yeah. Have they done something to the movement? The, the, the... They do their own stuff. Well, they, you know, if you, if, when you read into it, they say that, you know, they have to find movements that meet their criterion. Mm. And then they go ahead and they do all their own finishing and stuff. That's gorgeous. To make, to make it look pretty. Yeah, that is lovely. Very, very cool. Nice. Nice. Thank you. TGV's TGV. number nine. nine. It's a Seiko, and it's the uh, reissue of the Alpinist. And, um, and in typical fashion, Seiko have done this kind of a one-two punch strategy where they have the, the limited edition, the higher-end version that's very, very faithful to the, to the first 1959 Alpinist, which is completely different to what we know today. Right. This is before, when it, it kind of evolved into the compass and with the numerals on the dial. It's funny because the, I was thinking about this, and I, I may have said it in the Alpinist review, but the numerals are almost not identical but very similar to the numerals used in the pre-explorer rolex that became the explorer okay. i don't know if that was deliberate because of course everyone knows the alpinist is their mountaineering watch it's their first true kind of sports watch it's the second uh, continuously running line in the history of of seiko so very 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 important again not reinventing the wheel but it is a logical i've always wondered when are they going to do this they've done it with the 62 right. mass and now right 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 doing... and a throwback now to non-divers and of course typically to, just the sake i mean it's becoming like a pattern now uh the limited edition of uh 1959 pieces is 3000 uh dollars or thereabouts and i'm sure it's going to sell out uh it, it's the smaller one of course uh, i think it's mm -hmm. 36 millimeters similar to the original and then they the, they've got the more affordable prospects one at 750 with the uh, 6r35 which has the 70 hour power reserve as the yes. limited edition has only 45 interestingly the prospects the cheaper one has the 200 meters water resistance and the limited edition only has 100 meters water resistance so i'm thinking actually i think the prospects even though it's it's more modern and it has it's kind of pulling away from the original design right i think it's actually better value what movement is in the three thousand dollar uh i've got written here six uh, l35 Okay, six L thirty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. That's like the um, the Marine Master movements, like eight L thirty five. Right. So you're yeah. So you're just you're getting elevated. Yeah, there. it's the higher. So yeah, the higher end. Uh, what I do love about this, and and why I think this is important, is because the original dial was so particular with the segmented triangles, and mm -hmm. if you notice, the the one at twelve is slightly different, so you got really good orientation. When you think of Explorer, you think of those three numerals, right, and, and right. the triangle, right. This, in a way, is the, the design language Seiko's version. And, and right. I, I'm really happy that they've gone back and, and, and I hope they do more in this style because the compass is so problematic with those alignment issues. Even, you yeah, know, yeah. This is just a beautiful, simple, uh, distinctly Seiko. So I, I really dig it. I think it's really cool. Um, nice. Yeah. yeah. It, this, I like how they put on a bund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bund yeah, yeah. strap. It's very cool. Mark number eight. I am a fan of the gold bar dial. Um, nice. And again, just be, and so the gold bar came out in, you know, along with the other with all the other uh, motifs. Mm. I'm actually just a fan of the gold. So what strikes me about it, uh, the fact that it's in 36, whatever, that doesn't really hit me that much. It's when I look at the dial, I'm like, wow, how the hell did they do this? Mm. Um, because it's all segmented, polished section. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, wow, they must have... Oh, it's like a mosaic. It's a, it's kind of, it's like brushed and polished, like alternating sections. Right. So I'm thinking they used some kind of chemical etching process and masked it, polished it, brushed off the mask, blah, 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 blah. Um, just really nice looking. But on top of that, I love how it works with the two-tone yeah, yeah, Jubilee yeah, yeah. bracelet, yeah. which is a word I can say. A Jubilee bracelet <laughs> and the and, and the fluted bezel. This to me is almost as good as like tapestry dial. Yes. I mean, it just yes. it just fully works. Um it works vertically, 
and it actually also gives you lines horizontally. Um, so yeah, again, it's just I'm, I'm loving the watch for the dial. It's the only reason I'm loving it. Um, but I just think it looks great. one of my picks is also Rolex, and I'm I'm going to talk about this later. Um, but I I think you you yeah you really hit the nail on the head because it, it works. It's it's bling, but without being like yes. over the top and kind of garish. It's it, yes. it plays with the light. I can only imagine what it's going to be like. And uh, it's funny because I was wearing um, a day date the other day and I was looking at the fluted bezel and I was really enjoying how it just reacts to light, you know? It's yeah. just... sure. Yeah, very, very cool. Oh. TGVs, TGVs, number eight. Well, my number eight is the Zenith uh, Chronomaster El Primero, the sport uh, mm-hmm. one. And I'm not sure when this came out. I, it kind of totally slipped past me. Uh, I only recently found out about this and obviously the first thing you notice is it's very daytona-esque of course you know i love it i think it's a clever move that references zenith's involvement with the rolex daytona and i think that they have every right to do it um and it does have its own characteristics the lovely tri-color compacts uh love it it's beautiful the problem is with watches, well, with any hobby, there's going to be the overly sensitive that's going to maybe take offense to it. I personally, I don't give two hoots. I think Zenith has every right to do this. Sure. As much as I loathe this term and I'm cringe, cringe, cringe. Cringe warning. Cringe warning. Cringe warning. <laughs> it's a cliche, but it is actually a pretty good value proposition. Okay. Because you've got the um, the El Primero movement, the column wheel in house, massively important. It's the world's first high frequency automatic yeah. chronograph, um, yeah. and it has that one tenth of a second indication. Which, if you're really, if you're going to really need to do, you know, time a race, that's technically it's superior. So, uh, and that lovely ceramic bezel, I just love it. I think, yeah, I went through a phase of almost buying a Daytona. Had I've done that, I would be selling it to buy this because I'd rather have this. Okay. Um, Strong words. I know. I know. But Strong words from the man wearing a, move, a movement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there you go. I think. I mean, at ten, it's okay. The retail is what ten grand, but I think, I think you get more. You get more for that ten grand. And maybe you can actually walk into a store and buy one. Yes. <laughs> yes. There you go. Imagine that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mark's number seven. You talked about coaxial in the beginning. So I am on to the Omega, Omega, Blova. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the uh, Seamaster Tokyo 2020 edition, oh. which obviously didn't come out when it was. Yeah. I guess it, I guess it didn't really do the job it was supposed to because of world events. Right. But I honestly, I picked this watch only for its looks i just think the white this it's got a ceramic dial yeah. a ceramic wave dial the blue seamaster hands and those kind of skeletony hands uh and a little just a, a glimpse of red writing mm. red white and blue uh 42 millimeters i really just can't you're into your white dials huh I am into what I think this thing, the way the white and the blue, I love white and blue. Um, right. The way they play together, I think is perfect. Um, I, I could see ditch in the helium escape valve. But other than that, I, I think, uh, I, I think just the coloring is just gorgeous. Mm. Um, and, you know, coaxial is a term, I guess, that a lot of people throw around, but they don't really know what it, what it means. Um, you know, escapements and watches uh, we're used to the regular uh, pallet escapement, mm-hmm. but this is coaxial. This is a totally different technology, only developed, I want to say, like sometime in the 80s. Um, I, my dates might be a little bit off, but somebody came up with a different idea uh, to reduce sliding friction between uh, it was George pallet Daniels, jewels. Wasn't it? The, I think the that, British, I think you are correct. Uh, I guess. Horologist, yeah. Yes. Yeah, to reduce sliding friction between pallet stones and escape wheel. And uh, it's really cool I, it's just you know cool stuff this this is you know all the only new thing to come to watchmaking in the automatic movement in like 400 years right. well, not 400 right. but you know yeah <laughs> and i think you can see it through the back because it's got that display yeah. back it's it's kind of tough to see right. i mean you gotta kind of you really kind of know what you're looking for mm. but yeah 
Yeah, very cool. Yeah. And is this a limited edition or is this general? You know, I it, it didn't say it was limited edition, um, so I don't think it is. Yeah. But I mean, I, I could be totally wrong. It comes with the box and all the you know the certificate and stuff. Oh the Olympics, yeah, because uh, Omega is the official timekeeper. Yep. Right. Sorry, excuse me. That, that's it. Like I said, I'm 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 simple to please. Sometimes I like the color. Blue, white. <laughs> yeah. Mar- Done. Marks on it. Yeah. Exactly, you got Fine. it. Uh, about about five grand. Five that's grand. Yeah, that's not. That's, yeah. I mean, uh, oh, it's a master chronometer too. So yeah. Yeah, it is certified. Yeah. TGV number seven. So Breitling this year have really rejuvenated the Datora. I'm not quite sure how because I read it like Italian, like Datora. Right. You know. Oh my god, they hit it out the park design wise. Oh, but the one that really steals my heart is the. Um, the B25 Datora 42 with the pink, kind of salmon pink dial. Great use of color. Yeah, exactly. And the way it works with the with the blue. D- blue hands. Yeah, it's just yeah. gorgeous. It does work. It does work. It's very unbrightling. Yeah, it is very unbrightling. Um, but you know what? I was thinking about this. And every time I review a brightling and I do the history section, and so many people forget how integral they were to the development of the chronograph. I mean, the two pushes on a watch, that came from them. Right. So mm-hmm. the idea behind this collection was to pay homage, and I'm, I'll read you some of their marketing spiel. Paying homage to three generations of innovators, Leon, Gaston, and Willie Brightling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, it, look, it's good spiel because it's true. Uh, it looks as if it came straight out of the 40s. It's right. so classic. It it's a very classy, elegant design. It's beautifully balanced with the with the V shape of the layout, and then of course you've got the two little date uh, day and date uh, windows. I love yeah, that. It's, oh, it's just I I could just stare at this all day. And thankfully, yeah. thankfully, it's forty two millimeters and a little bit too thick for me. So, uh, um, oh, perfect, perfect for you not to buy. Exactly. It. So it saved me a bunch of money. <laughs> but seriously, if this was a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner. I would be all over it. Uh, and I think it is a column wheel. I'm fairly sure it's uh, their own movement inside. Movement. So, okay. yeah, I. It's, oh, it's just gorgeous. And it's nice to know that they're still making cool stuff because, what is it, a year or two ago, they were bought over by a uh, uh, some kind of fund bought them. Oh, really? Like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. The, there was a bit yeah. of controversy about to that. Yes, yes, because, oh, they're losing their heritage if you will right right but it doesn't seem like it no i think i think it's um i think they did a bit of a, a, a bit of a wobbly a few years back just after that i think they were like you know kind of anxious to prove themselves but i think i think with watches like this this i mean this i look at that and that looks like a real luxury chronograph you know right, that's right. what they should be doing so i think it's i think they're they're doing well i think it's gorgeous yeah i agree i agree with you Mark's number six. six. A brand I really don't follow that much, uh, Tudor. Oh, yeah, nice. And it's going to be the the Black Bay Chrono. Nice. Cool looking, obviously, really nice. Classic Tudor hands. Um, Panda, reverse Panda. Uh, their, their movement, MT5813. 70 hour power reserve, uh, 41 joules. To me, um... It's almost like a defining, I guess a defining moment, if you will. They either have other chronos, but to me, this could almost be like their Zenith um, or their, you know, their Daytona, right. um, their Speedmaster. Um, I, I feel like it's almost, it's more than just a watch at this point. Um, is this a whole future for them mm. of building, you know, these uh, bicompacts chronographs? Going back in time, kind of bringing up some old vintage designs. Um, yeah. No, I just, it kind of, it, it, it struck my eye. Mm. Uh, you know, like I said, they're doing the regular Panda, the reverse Panda, bracelets, bun straps, whatever. Mm. Um, kind of gets me on the aluminum insert. I, I guess that's maybe for a warmth or a feel kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, would much rather obviously see a ceramic but the price kind of got me i was very uh i expected to be more than the five grand or so yeah that it it's is. reasonable i mean you know for uh you know for a chronograph virtually an in-house movement um yeah. yeah yeah i thought that was again you've said it before you know a value proposition you know it cringe for me <laughs> It's not a horrible deal. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, if, if your Zenith was 10 grand and now this is five grand, I, I think that uh, not bad. Uh, one criticism and one thing I really like about it. My criticism is the... Uh, Please. 
the faux riveted bracelet. I mean, okay. I get why they did that, but have you ever seen those old da- uh, the old Daytonas that had those kind of springy, stretchy brace? Uh, I, no. I, once I handled a Paul Newman, right? And I, I, I thought I broke it, but, no. it's, <laughs> but it's actually right. stretchy. I thought that was so cool. I wish they would have done that with this and actually use, yeah, and use those rivets. Like for real. But I have to say that the thing I love about this is the balance, like the, the date in the middle, yep. got the triangle at the top. It's just really beautifully balanced. It's very satisfying yeah. to look at. TGV's number six. Talking of chronographs, uh, I just Wait, what do you I got? just reviewed it. Da, 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 da. Ah. This is the um, the official Mars watch from Fortis, and I'll leave a guys. I'll leave a if you missed the review da, 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 there. Um, so I'm not going to bang on about it too much because uh, you know guys check out the review obviously, but um, it's a titanium watch and it's okay. huge. But I mean it's huge for purpose. You probably didn't have time to see it, but it's got this little bezels that's especially to time um the 10 minute delay in transmissions from right uh, from from mars to ground mm-hmm. uh what's it uh ground, ground control. control it's fine ground control ground control to major time yeah, okay. yeah i know <laughs> yeah <laughs> that what you yeah, want to yeah. say <laughs> <laughs> they were having problems in 2017 they've they've been bought by a new owner who's a fan of the brand and then yeah. their new releases he's he's restored the factory which i've been to and it's a it's a beautiful place uh in gretchen in switzerland and it's no secret i'm a massive fan of the brand i love their independence right. i love the fact that they're so underrated and they're just it's it's just so much history it's special it's something special consistently putting out these new watches that are just ah, oh, just the design just the thought the the quality and they're they're not they're unpretentious and they're just there to do the job there's an honesty about them and i just i just i really really dig it i think fortis are gonna do even bigger better things um they're in the right hands finally and and they've got the backing to do what they're supposed to do it's good it's good looking i like to use the color bit of blue for you yeah i do gray and blue very nice marks number five. five five Was the last video we did the one where we said the brands were better when Bef- before? Yeah. yeah, was that the last video we did? Yeah, yeah. Okay, did, so one yeah. of the one of the brands I covered was Benris. Um, so I'm not doing Benris. <laughs> I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing Bertucci, which is a brand I carry. Um, but they are coming out with a watch now, as we're filming this, so right. it should be in the store soon. Um, called the Retroform. Now, the Retroform is a 40 millimeter recreation of a 60s, 70s Vietnam era um, soldier's watch or a field watch. Uh, so they went to the mill spec true to form a field watch, um, but upgrading it to 40 millimeters. Um, it's got an olive drab one piece case, uh, five year battery. 100 meters of water resistance, Swiss Luminova. So they faithfully recreated this field watch. Probably the best part about it is that they're using an AmeriCorps movement, which is a USA-based movement. Um, They come from uh, Fountain Hills, Arizona, from Fine Timepiece Solutions. Um, 15 seconds a month accuracy. Bertucci is an American company. they may not be assembling them stateside, uh, mm-hmm. but American company, American movement, um, American looking field watch. It's got what they're a lot of trademarks and patents and stuff going on. Uh, it's got a retro form crystal, which is almost like acrylic, except it's supposed to be fingerprint free, more shatterproof than Hesolite. Uh, it just it's an unbranded dial comes in three different flavors oh and it's 140 bucks i love it i, I just have, oh man I mean, the only I way really it could get like better this. is if it was an automatic but yeah yeah or manual wind or yeah or manual. manual right i really think that you know for me to put a 140 dollar watch in, in in what i consider a top 10 release of the year obviously besides the fact that i sell it but i think this thing is like i think this is going to be like candy yeah i no, think this I is going to be it. gobbled up alive sorry what was the size of this 40 40. So whereas the originals oh. were like 36, yeah. this guy, they, they upped it a little bit to be a little more modern. So this guy is 40. Um, I, but if this was uh, 38, 
and with Emmanuel Wind, I would be all over it. You'd be all over it, huh? Oh yeah, I'd buy it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's very. It reminds me of the the, the Vietnam Benrus mil spec Benrus. I that's had. what it's supposed to be looking yeah. like. But the case is a little bit SKX ish. It's a little bit. Well, it's a little bit larger. Yeah. Right. No. Um. The lugs are a little bit different. Bertucci is Bertucci is a, an Italian name. It is an Italian name. The owner's last name is Bertucci. <laughs> Bertucci. Okay. Cool. Cool. I've, it's definitely on my radar. I I'm not familiar with this brand. I mean, I've I've noticed it in your store. Yeah, they're known for fi- field watches are their thing. That's kind of what they do. Um, right. Almost. I would say every watch they sell is a field. They do some tritium. Mostly not no nonsense field watches. A lot of them are titanium. This one happens to be polycarbonate, um, but and they run the whole gamut from like sixty bucks up to like three or four hundred. Interesting. And when were they founded? Do you know? You know this. I this is a good question. This I don't know. I would say it was within the last decade or two. Right. Not right. oh, so company. it's a new. It's a new relatively. Would you say it's like a micro brand or? I don't think so because you know what they're really big in. You know they may not be in every watch store you see, but they're mm-hmm. big in the outdoor world. Um, right. You know, shot show kind of stuff, uh, more tactical uh, gear, um, right. hunters. That this that's the crowd they're big with. TGV number five. My number five pick is the uh, the, the green leaf dial. Ah, uh, so gotcha. we can't. Yeah, the palm trees. The palm trees. Now, I think we should really mention that uh, this year has all been about green. Everyone's doing green watches all of a sudden. So if I, re- I, I quickly jotted down a few brands. Rado, Piaget, Patek, Tudor, yeah. Cartier, Rolex, Oris, Seiko, Grand Seiko, Timex, JLC, Tag Heuer, Casio, Moser, Breitling, Adumar Piguet. Montblanc, Gucci, Panerai. Wow. That's just the ones I've noticed. Yeah. Green is the new... So blue? green is the new, yeah. <laughs> green blue, is the new blue, yeah. I yes. think so. No, keep blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thing is, this is I, I said this in the Seiko video. Was it the Alpinist or was it the Hulk that started this trend? Oh, I don't think the Alpinist had enough um, penetration no? into both into both the consumer market and into the you know watch retail sector. Personally, really? I think a lot of people. When the Hulk came out, however, well, how many years ago did the Hulk come out? A de- is it a decade? Oh, it's been a while, yeah. Probably more than a decade. Was it, it was it, the Kermit was first, I think, and then yeah. they went all green. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't, and it was Rolex, so that definitely turns eyes. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I would say it was that one. Right, okay, fair decade. enough. So, anyway, I wanted to include something green. Right. And I think the one I like the most is, is this Rolex. I think that, uh, like you were saying earlier, when it comes to doing dials, Rolex absolutely know what they're doing. And, and right. the date just has had probably more different dials than any other watch I can think of. Right. For, you know, whether they're going to have a, a marble dial or a, um, a lapis lazuli dial right. or whatever. They, they always do too. these beautiful, yeah. crazy things. Rolex. Wood, wood, wood grain dials, right? Wood bark dial. dial. Oh, yeah. Bark is the gold. Yeah, they do a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah. So what I really like about this is, uh, well, firstly, I think it's, <laughs> the first thing I thought about was like, oh, it's a Rolex for Hugo because it's kind of Jurassic Park, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coming through the leaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, they should put a little dinosaur there. Anyway, um, that's the first thing I thought. But then I was like looking at it and then I watched a video on their um, website and the way it plays with the lights, it's not just one green, it's different greens. Yeah. So they achieved this by uh, using different combinations of copper, zinc, nickel, chromium, titanium, silicon and some other things that i i think they're not saying exactly how they do it right because they're Rolex, you know right, of um but all they say is cutting edge technology to create a deep vibrant metallic color anyone else would just paint the dial yeah yeah like enamel or yeah or just yeah. Paint it. yeah a regular you know painting process they used but. to do that in some of their very first like the older uh, Rolex is very very collectible ones they used to do that but anyway I just think I think it's the most interesting of the green dial mania Mark's number four 
I had to look at this one twice. I am on a totally a brand I'm not a fan of at all, uh, Cartier. Oh, really? And I, yeah, just, you know, I don't know. I'm not that sophisticated. I'm not like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. Uh, so Cartier, the tank watch, which has right. been around since friggin' forever. It's one forever. of the oldest yeah. watch lines out there, the tank. Now, forget yeah. Cartier. Cartier's been around since, like, 19, just uh, World War One time, right? 1917 or something. Um, this watch came out not long after the brand was launched. So, obviously, it's been around for a long time. So, the tank watch, um, just a bit of background. Um, obviously, it looks like a tank. I, I did not know this, though. The tank it's modeled after is the Renault FT-17. Yeah. yeah a yeah, French yeah, tank yeah. used during the First World War. But anyways, so why did I pick this watch? Well... Cartier went solar. The watch runs on a solar quartz movement. It is a first for Cartier. That's um, crazy. I would say it is almost a first for virtually any luxury watchmaker. So you said just you just said everyone's going green. This is a different kind of going green, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you know. To me, solar is Casio, Seiko, Citizen. Sin, yeah. You know, the Orient dabbled in solar for a while. Uh, but this guy at around twenty five hundred bucks, thought, "Wow, they really." I don't know. I don't know if they developed their own movement or how they did it. Um, but there was definitely a lot of engineering involved because the generally on a solar watch, the dial is semi transparent. That's why mm -hmm. sometimes they look like a weird shape. But the dial on this one is actually solid white. The light is admitted through the Roman numerals. So the Roman numerals are the cell. Um, that's clever. Is no, that that's clever? Is really it? clever. Because your your cells are generally dark in color. You know they're virtually black. Yeah. Um, you know to to absorb the greatest amount of light. That's uh, oh, that's like one of those like. It's like a what? hidden gem. Yeah, why did I think of that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, like, so so logical. It, yeah. it makes total sense. Um, yeah. So, but the, other than that, it's still just a Cartier with the single little sapphire at the you know on on the crown. Oh, um, the like it, yeah. yeah, I mean, like I said, not cheap, twenty five hundred bucks. But they did say between servicing about sixteen years between servicing. So considering Jeez. that you know a normal battery is you know at most what three years. You know, four years, even uh, five years. This you know is, guy's going to go the distance. I have to say this, and um, I I bought my wife a Cartier tank uh, because it's a it's a family tradition. Like my mum has one, okay. My aunt has one. Like it's just one of those like old brands that we it's been in our family since I can't even remember, but since it, the beginning of the brand, right? But the tank is just it's to me it's synonymous with like class and yeah and, and elegant sophistication yeah and ele elegance and yeah. um th my wife's one is the xl it's a quartz right okay mm -hmm. she doesn't wear it all the time so it, she doesn't have to set it you know and, right. and the quartz makes sense and i think it makes sense for the general because a lot of people that buy cartiers i would imagine are kind of like you know well to do kind of yeah, uh, I think I'll wear my Cartier next week. Next week, yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's going to sit in the drawer for a while. Yeah, or they're going to a function or something, and yeah. you know, and that's the kind of audience. So it makes total sense. I totally it does. get it. It does. I wonder is this a, going to be a turning point for for other brands to hop on this bandwagon yeah. and kind of explore this? Like I said, I I know of no other luxury brand, like a real luxury brand like Cartier. Um, that does solar. Mm. There's none I know of. That's why, to me, I was like, oh. <laughs> I mean, I love the watch, but I just love the blending of um, technologies. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's like class meets, you know, the future. Yeah, I'm really glad you mentioned that. Yeah, very cool. TGV is number four. Now, when I first saw this, I was like, oh, God, that's that's uh, that's hideous. I was like, what is that? You know, and uh, it didn't attract me. But then when I read about it, and what it went into it, I was like, my God, that is genius. So what it is, is basically a mechanical G-Shock. That's basically what it is, right? Um, so they've developed, they, they set up a special department in the, the IWC factory to experiment and doing these kind of really super, super tough uh, pilot watches. And they came out with this. And apparently it took um, something like eight years of, of development, patented, Brin G system, whatever the hell that means, but it c can 
survive an acceleration of 30,000 Gs? I don't... Is that a... What is that? Well, how and how... How engineer do you want to get? Um, when they say 30,000 Gs, they don't mean sustained because that would, well, that would kill the wearer <laughs> by, by, a, by a long shot. And the watch would weigh, you know, roughly 15,000 pounds on your wrist. Oh, my they God. Mean, they mean in a shock environment. So they're talking about some kind of uh, very short, short duration waveform, high frequency shock that you would see in aerospace. Wow. So, and so it's still, it's still very... It's very impressive. Yeah, it is impressive. It is impressive. It's very impressive. And the the three two one one five caliber inside has an one hundred and twenty hour power reserve. Which wow, <laughs> is that one barrel? Do you know? I don't know. I don't. That's that's impressive. Yeah, it is a big watch. So I'm I'm thinking that's, they just have the the space for it. You know, that's almost a week. That's uh, you know, that's nuts. But I'm I, I guess if you're going in a plane and upside down and everything, it's charging like crazy right <laughs> yeah yeah it's kind of interesting looking too so it's like the whole movement is floating within the case exactly yeah that's why I'm, i use the kind of the g-shock analogy you know when i when i read about it i was like yeah i've always wanted i've secretly always wanted g-shock right to make right a, a mechanical like watch a, what, right what, got it what would they do if it was mechanical that, this is what they'd come up with something like this um i like it because also it's a departure from the portofino the 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 kind of typical fliegers it's a bit samey right. samey and then they're boom they come out with this it's just like wow okay well because they've been working on it for eight years yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh and by the way it's made of, get this it's made from this thing called serotanium right which sounds like something from star star wars or star sounds Trek. like uh, unobtainium yeah exactly <laughs> exactly it's a combination of ceramic and titanium. Best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. Isn't that yeah, cool? Light, lightweight and scratch resistant. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I I kind of like it, but it's kind of lovably ugly. Now, is this like a real production piece? I have no I idea. So. I have no idea. I, I, I mean, who would wear this? Well, how big is it? Did you say? It, I know it's big. I think it's like 40 some, 45 or 43. Well, that's, or not, well, that's not terrible. Marks Mark number three. Mark three. Jesus, look at this. SBGC240. I picked it you know, for a few reasons, but really the main reason I'm picking this watch is because it is the 140 years of Seiko anniversary model. Um, Seiko was founded in 1881. That's when uh, Hattori founded the company. Mm -hmm. um, so the watch is uses a movement that's been around for a little while, an NR86, um, but it's a spring drive, like, yeah, spring drive gmt which says this has two and then is also a chronograph in the movement uh 72 hours of power reserve whether you're using the chronograph or not which was awesome mm. one second a day accuracy but like I said, all these things they've made them for a while um but what i thought was just totally awesome was that damn the company's been around for 140 years mm. <laughs> so for the 140 anniversary they made this model uh it's going to combine uh, 18 karat gold Steel and ceramic. Very nice. And, uh, un, you know, it's a limited run of 500 pieces. Unfortunately, it's a $15,000 watch. Jeez. Uh, excuse me. Excuse 18. me, 19000 Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. The gold one is 19 The non-limiteds are like 14 or 15 And then there's another step down that's got a different bezel. They're like 8 or 9K. Those, those um, uh, the, the, the subtile placement is really cool. It's unusual. Isn't it really nice? And I... It's very artistic, if you will. Yeah. Um, the power reserve needle just works. It, it balances the grand, you know, the grand whole Grand Seiko logo and everything mm. is, is is offset. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of works with the whole thing. And you know, as I was reading about it, it did occur to me since we're talking so much about column wheel chronographs, mm. um, it is a column wheel chrono. Uh, but the advantage of spring drives, so you said with Zenith before that the 36,000 beat per hour movement gets you tenths of a second yeah. accuracy, yeah. which obviously depends how fast you hit the button and stuff. Right. Um, but because it's spring drive, there theoretically is no resolution to when the second's hand can stop. Right. So, you know, much like, how many years ago it was? I don't know if you remember this. Uh, it's probably almost a decade ago. I think it's Tag came out with a concept watch that did one one hundredth of a second. 
um, as a mechanical chronograph. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, so this actually will go to finer resolution than that because whenever you snap that little lever into the column wheel, mm. the movement will freeze. Uh, so kind of a like cool little addition, but for, for me, it, it was all about just being 140 years of Seiko. So they got the minutes at the top and then directly yep. below it, they've got the hours. Yes, so it, it's, it, it makes sense. Yeah. It's a logical placement. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. Running seconds is kind of on the left. It's mm. not marked. It just kind of lets you know that the watch is going. Yeah, and the way the GMT hand is integrated, it's very different looking than the main hand, so there's no confusion. Mm. Um, yeah, just like, like just brilliant, brilliantly executed. Absolutely. Not a watch I want. Right. Right. But you, but you respect you. you I respect it. Yeah. 140 years that they've been in business, and this is what they chose to, you know, celebrate that anniversary. And I thought it was a, you know, a, a good go. Yeah, absolutely. It's gorgeous. It is really cool. There's something always Indeed. very nice about black and gold together. Yes, it just works. TGV's number three. Ah, oh, God, I'm, I'm kind of dreading this one, yeah, because. This watch is so damn complicated. I don't even understand. I don't. <laughs> I don't understand. I'm just like, wh- okay. So my third pick, the JLC Grand Complication Reverso, the Hybris Mechanica Quadrotype. Whatever. What the hell is this thing? Uh, yeah. So uh, okay. So this year we've had, you know, you got the Holy Trinity, right? You got VC AP. Patek, you know, Patek yes. does this, uh, AP is doing that, VC does some impressive stuff, but then comes along JLC, the watchmaker's watchmaker. Hashtag drop the mic, Elvis has left the building. Hold my beer. Hold my beer. Because <laughs> uh, this has four separate faces. It's the first time oh, this has ever been d- done. Four separate oh, faces Jesus. and one of the most complex lunar month displays ever used in the watch. I'm playing with the animation right now as yeah. you're talking to me. That is amazing. Holy schmoly. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, okay. Phase one is time, one minute tourbillon, instantaneous perpetual calendar with grand date, day, month, leap year indication, day, night indication. That's phase one. Phase two. Jump. So now, now phase two now, is this you're flipping over the main face? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go. Uh, jumping digital hour dis- time display. Okay, with, I see that. With minute repeater, with dead time avoidance system, right? What the hell is that? God knows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is why I think you need like a degree to start to understand what this watch is like, you know? That's how complicated it is, right? Okay, face... Dead time, because dead, dead beat is um, ticking every second. Yeah. Like when a mechanic watch ticks every... That's like dead beat, I think. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. All right, guys, in the comments, if anyone can explain dead time avoidance, whatever that is. Face <laughs> three, Sino... I don't even know how, how... I can't even read this. Synodic... Synodic... Anomalistic... Something anom- with the moon. Monolistic and draconic moon phase... Moon phase displays. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah, right? Holy smokes. And then finally, face four, uh, moon phase as seen from the Southern Hemisphere. I should have prefaced this with saying, guys... JLC uploaded I think like a 20 almost half an hour video just about this watch explaining how everything works I am not going to even attempt to go there so just go (laughs) go and watch that video right oh god I mean who can compete with this who can compete with that on a technical level yeah nobody nobody so the movement is their caliber 185 which um has a 50 hour power reserve that i do understand um runs at, t- <laughs> <laughs> runs at 28,800 vibrations an hour I, I you know the whole holy trinity that's a load of rubbish just just jlc and then everyone else below right you know um and i've been to their factory and what's interesting is when we toured it you start at the bottom floor and then you go up and as you go up the the watch gets more developed so at the bottom floor is there they're they're cutting blocks of steel and gold right like literally you can hold a block of steel right sure then then you go to the second level and they they're they're cutting it down and making the the um the escapements and all the components they're heating this and all the bits and bobs are made right then you go to assembly polishing and then on the top floor there's this kind of, it's almost like a bond layer, kind of like 
that have all the artisans right painting decorating yeah, making all, dials yeah yeah all this crazy Engraving. stuff got it and i think once again it proves that they are the masters of complications that they are the masters of of i mean who thought of this i mean it's just well, so I guess it's it's their reverso squared, right? I exactly. Mean, I know what it is. It's a reverso with a reverso. When a watch blows your mind like this, yeah, you've got to put it in the list. So you of know. course, of course, it's, uh, yeah, that's impressive. I will say that is totally impressive. Yeah, very impressive <laughs> stuff. Mark number, number two. two. Damasco, um, much like every other you know, company, watch company in the world that is not part of the Swatch group and does not, and that does not have the fortitude and wherewithal to develop their own movements has always been subject to the tribes and tribulations of the Swatch group. And are they selling at a movements or are they not? You know, it's yeah. kind of like, what shirt am I wearing today? Um, Cause Ed has flip flopped on the decision many times, I say since around 2001 or so. Um, so Damasco, finally took the initiative and said we're going to start to develop our own calibers and that is born in uh this is the dk30 which basically takes the place of what's known as the ds30 which mm. is a small little 39 millimeter three-handed watch very simple it ran on it did run on the edit the ds30 ran on the edit 2824 uh but then damasco pretty much got fed up with the whole edit thing and said mm. let's try to make ourselves a little more independent um and they're hitting it up with uh starting with a dk30 and dk32 which uses their in-house their own in-house developed a26 movement and it is really their departure from their reliance on edda i um, mean being damasco the watch itself has all the usual accoutrement submarine mm. steel double ar crystal you know, just super duper, really clean, easy to read, very simple design. Um, but where the where the real beauty comes in is in their movement. Now, I did an entire video on my YouTube channel on this movement, explaining it. I had some really cool. They should we, should we link it somewhere? Oh, if you could, yeah, I'll have to. Let's link you it. You do there. that magical <laughs> thing with your hands. I have to get you the link to it. Um, yeah, they. Um, so really, they were in a very. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My, I'll tell you, much like I, as a seller, I'm in a very advantageous position to see what sells, what people want, what people right. desire. Um, Damasco is in a very advantageous position selling watches with Edda Movements since their inception in the early 90s or so. Um, they know every shortfall of the Edda Movement. And they, when they developed their own movement, this A26, they were able to say, okay, we don't like this part about the edit. We don't like this part. We don't like this part. And they changed all that. Right. So it retains a lot of the edit base, but then they changed a lot of the things that break off in, such as the auto winder, such as the manual winding gears and um, yeah. a whole bunch of other stuff. Then they can go in and do their own finishing, blue screws, blah, 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 blah. And you wind up with, you know, so now this movement is going to now springboard. It comes with a date and without a date. I should say without a date and with a date. Mm. Um, and then this will springboard. They can more than likely pop on maybe a GMT module, chronograph modules. This will lead them into future, you know, I guess autonomy or non-reliance on one of the big boys for watch movements. Uh, it, it comes at a premium. Uh, the regular DS30 was like a thousand bucks or so. And then if you want it with their in-house movement, it does go up um, by a pretty penny. I want to say it goes up by like 60% or so in price. So it gets pricey, but you know, sales are always an indication. People flock to it. Um, they so they sell out pretty quick. They have to understand that that to do to to make something in-house, that the the cost. I mean, we're talking about. Pro they probably had to invest like three to five million tons of money and then forget the time yeah um everything else and working out the kinks um mm. you gotta re recoup that investment you can't compare yourself to a company like etta that's got the backing of the swatch group yeah you know to make you know lord knows how many movements a year it's very germanic and it's it's oh, very clean yeah. efficient yes. uh i'm just looking at that dial it, it the job is to tell time yeah and yeah, that's yeah. it the best as best as it can yeah dig it it's very very cool what is the size of this Let's have 39 Ooh, 200 yeah. meters water resistance Jeez. yeah and super thin too it's it's a really a nice it's a nice 9.9 millimeters yeah it ain't 10 millimeters man it's 9.9 .9. <laughs> very german <laughs> 
Oh yeah, design engineered made in Germany. Very cool. Oh yeah, hundred percent. They make them in. Yeah. Ge- I mean, they do everything. Damasco makes their own cases. You know, they do everything. I wouldn't be surprised if they start selling their movements to like Zins and the, you know, a bit like well, how JLC they supply yeah. movements to all the big boys. You know, so to, to pay, you know, it's um, it's really at this point, you know, when Edda first announced it, you know, that's when Salida really came into being, yeah. you know, and started manufacturing movements. A couple other companies did, but then it kind of died off. And I would say that now it's really there's still not no no players in the market of Swiss. Mm. You know, or good, I shouldn't say Swiss because this is German, of good quality automatic movements uh, yeah. other than our friends at Miyota uh, and Seiko. Yeah, 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 yeah. So well, some, somebody is eventually going to do it and make a ton of money. TGV is number two. Squale. Oh. So, yeah, I, I, um, it's funny we went from JLC to Squale, but I, I, I almost put this at number one. Uh, and I'm slightly cheating here because it's not just one watch, it's basically three watches, but it's all based on the same case. Now, I have one of them here. Now, this is this has been sent in. Uh, I'll show you that. Let me get back to you. I was off of you for a second. Okay, I'm back. Oh, that looks like the 60th anniversary? Yes, but this okay. is a special version, and I have to give a massive thank you to Kim from What Are Watches. He is the Korean... Authorized dealer for Squalet, right? That Got- dude sent me coffee. Yeah, a few months ago. He's so nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he's the nicest guy. But he was so nice. <laughs> yeah, he's so he's done a special version of the Sub Thirty Nine. Oh, really, I did not know this. It even comes in this Japanese wood handmade box, right? Okay. And okay, so this is not actually the watch I'm, I'm I should be talking about, but I had to mention it because he tweaked the design. He made the lug width a little bit to, from 22 to 20. He just tweaked it. Um, and I just love the fact that Squaleo are working with... Because they've worked yep. with you, with the, yep. uh, with the Montauk. Montauk. Yep. They really work with their, um, their authorized dealers. I they think absolutely it's, do. It's fantastic. Anyway, I will leave the details to that watch because it's a limited edition, only 500 being made. I think it's, it's no date. It's just perfection. And... and you know, I just said the other day that my little 39, this is now my favorite watch. It's for me, it's perfection. It's what well, I did say the negatives in the video that, you know, yeah, I would love the lugs to be 20. It was just a little bit more elegant, a little yep. bit more proportional. But why am I talking about this? Why is it so important? And I have to explain a little bit of history, the patent on this. And this was recently kind of found out by another Squire enthusiast, uh, Amsterdam watch company. They did the Subino. Mm-hmm. which is, again, based on this. Andrea Maggi, the owner of Squale, yep. found all these cases uh, from the 50s. Amsterdam Watch Company was able, through meticulous uh, kind of investigation, traced the patents back to an office and were able to, 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 to finally kind of uncover all these connections with Blanc Pan and what, when Squale were doing this. Because when Van, Von Buren died, the founder of Squale, yep. I mean, there was his daughter, Andrea right. took over, the, he bought the company, took over, and Andrea, his family comes from the jewelry business, they were distributors for Squale since the beginning. So yep. they didn't have a natural heir, but in a way, kind right. of Andrea is, you know. Kind of, yeah. So the, all, this, all the, the, the history kind of went to the grave with Von Buren. There's, right. You know, how did the deals with Doxa and, and Blanc Pan, how did that come about? When did it start... Uh, happening nobody knows but anyway this guy at amsterdam watch company managed to find the track down trace the the patterns so these the the case of the sub 39 Mm -hmm. uh comes from the early 1950s okay so just to put it into context the the 50 fathoms the first true dive watch right was launched in 1953 so the fact that squally were making cases for for blank pan this early on Right. It's just, it's like, you know, forget the, 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 the um, 1521. Yeah, it's a wonder. I love this, yeah. the Squalier Master from this, but that was the 70s. Right. We're talking the, the infancy, the birth yeah, of, of, is, of yeah, diving. Going back. When I was reviewing the, the newer ones, because they have um, they came out with the Super Blue, they came yeah. out with the, uh, the Arabic dial, beautiful, beautiful timepieces. When I did the research, 
there was a clip on Italian television of of von Buren swimming, testing dive watches, oh, experimenting cool. with locking locking uh, like the the tiger, which is a bit bit like yeah. the Plo Prof, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, this was before Amiga. This was really in the early days, and right. I, I it's it's almost they're so underrated the story needs to be told i'm i'm kind of tempted to do a video and try and uncover as much as i can and tell the story because it needs to be told right so back to these watches sorry i'm, yeah, I'm yeah. rambling because that's I'm, okay good I'm, rambles yeah i'm very passionate about it because it's it's my favorite watch now and i love the the brand so much now they've come out with a gmt mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully by the, the time the video will be out, uh, I think it's on pre-order right now, but hopefully when the, 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 the video comes out, you can order it. And I just think that's, ah, that's great. I think people need to understand the significance of the Sub 39 because, yeah, the original was, because uh, I, I owned an MC4 from Blank Pan. It was tiny, it's 34 millimeters. Yeah. Men wore watches, dive watches that small. Yeah. So the Sub 39, it's a great everyday size, but now with the added GMT uh, complication, I think it's it's a logical move. And, and I've been using GMTs quite a bit more because with my day job, I have to talk to, I work with companies in Germany, in Italy, in Switzerland, and I have to time Zoom meetings. Right. Right. So it's just really, okay, yeah, we're not traveling as much as we used to because of for obvious reasons, but it is a really useful, you know, on this online world, it's a fantastic, sure. useful complication. It's a natural progression for that collection of watches. And I also think due to the importance of this case and Squale's legacy, uh, it's it's probably the most important watch and collection. So there we go. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, look at this one. I Just look at this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm kind of a bit... You know, because this is my, my, my one is the, is my favorite watch, but then I see this and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh man, he's taken perfection and perfected it even more. Mark, Mark number one. Boy, my number one. I'm very excited. This watch, well, the second I saw it, uh, you know, I saw it, I guess, watches and one was probably a day old and it came across on one of the blogs and I was like, oh, I'm like, I love that thing. Oh my God. So we're doing <laughs> the Patek uh, inline calendar, model number 5236P-001. Oh my God, So look what at is that. special about it, just right off the bat, it is a, it's a perpetual calendar, sure, great. I, I do have a lusting for one day to get a Patek, probably an annual calendar. I'm not sure I would go to spring for a perpetual. Mm. Um, but this thing has an inline calendar display. So it's got across the top of the dial, the day of the week, the date of the month, and then the month of the year. So full calendar display. Wow. You have a leap year indication at the bottom right to see where you are in the leap cycle. Mm -hmm. Moon phase at the six and day night indicator. Um, at the uh, the bottom left, uh, around the eight o'clock marker, the movement is a thing to behold. When you see it without the dial, um, it's truly amazing. Uh, being a perpetual calendar, I'll just read some of the highlights. Uh, it won't require any manual correction before February twenty eighth, twenty one hundred, because the that year is not a leap year due to the whole divisible by four hundred thing. The moon phase, fairly accurate. Only off by one day in 122 years. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, the day, date, month, obviously in one line. So those two wheels, and they're, they're concentric wheels, and hopefully you could show a picture of it on, yeah, on the screen. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to guess how they did I think I know how they did it's it. It's 118 pieces just for those four counters. Jeez. Uh, amazing. And then, you know, why put it in a steel case and make it possibly within reach of most people or some people? We'll put it in a platinum case <laughs> with, gold, <laughs> with gold hands. Uh, or, or center micro rotor. The whole thing is 41 millimeters by 11 thick. Blue alligator strap. Total comprised of 503 parts. Wow. 48 our power reserve and it is a mere one hundred and thirty thousand dollars sorry how much a hundred and thirty thousand minkia 
So, I don't know, man. God. I just think it looks awesome. It's yeah. so cool looking. It is so beautiful. Um, the whole idea of a calendar in a single lineup, obviously, is just wicked cool to begin with. Uh, it's kind of like uh, digital meets analog, if you will. Yeah, um, yeah. And then yeah, when you see it with the of... dial, you see with the dial removed, it's like, oh my god, it's there's concentric wheels spinning. Uh, on top of all that, it's a perpetual calendar, so it will add in a February 29th every four years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. wicked is that? And, and I mean, aside from the astronomical price, the at least you can you can wear that. I mean, if you were wearing that, you and it's it's true stealth wealth. Whereas the 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 JLC. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, mean, yeah. No. 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 It, yeah. I think there's only <laughs> ten of those being made. Yeah. It doesn't say that this is a limited run. Um, uh, I mean, okay. honestly, I mean, let's be brutally honest. One hundred thirty thousand dollars for a paddock. You're not nuts. It's not an insane price. I mean, sure, it's probably it's not their lower end of stuff, but it's not their higher end of stuff either. No, no. I mean, I love the wide uh, display back. I mean, you can really see. You can in see there. everything, yeah. right? Isn't that nice? Oh, and something I learned. I did not know this because I don't know much about paddock. All platinum paddocks have a hidden diamond between the lugs on the case at the six o'clock. Really? I didn't it know is, that. You can't even see it. They don't even show it. I just kept reading and I found, as I kept reading about platinum paddocks, they ha it is a two-point D, internally flawless diamond in every platinum watch. And why did they do that? I guess it's just kind of their little sign. Like you just said, stealth wealth is just another thing. It's their yeah. little signal. You know, like Rolex does a thing with the crown, three dots or a bar, right. depending on what the metal is. I think it, what it's, is it, it also tells you if it's triple lock, twin lock. Right, yeah. Um, it also goes by, like, platinum is a certain crown, blah, 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 blah. Kind of the same thing, but I thought that was, it's a nice, that was a nice little <laughs> trivia egg I found. <laughs> Yeah, that's very cool. You know, uh, with the micro rotor, right, I'm guessing it's going to be nice and thin. I'm just looking for... Oh, yeah, 11. Oh. Isn't that crazy? For that complicated, that's impressive. Yeah. 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 That is impressive. There was no doubt in my mind which which one I was going to pick. I see how yeah. they did the, Isn't the, that beautiful? the date. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's very clever. Yeah, it is. God, I need to I need to get a third job. <laughs> I'll be so stressed and my hair would all be grey and I'll just be like it's going to go grey anyway you might as well accelerate it exactly <laughs> exactly exactly TGV is number one okay so what do you got you know I'm going high end for my number one too okay this is oh god I don't I'm, I'm going to probably butcher this but the I've never the, heard of this name by the way yeah me neither I, I, me neither I I Discovered this on Instagram completely by accident. Um, the Nayo 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 I'm going to do it several ways and then I'll just pick the one that's <laughs> Nayo 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 How's it going over there? Nayo <laughs> na o na 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 like tau right tau is t-a-o right yeah yeah and this is n-a-o so so i would go with now now ya now ya okay so i don't know uh, if i'm right i'm just gonna <laughs> all right yeah. i'm gonna go with you i'm gonna go uh the now ya sorry say it again sorry <laughs> na yeah now ya hita and company this is the Naoya Hida Company. It's a bit like you mentioned the, with the Ming watch. It's a luxury micro brand. So based in Tokyo, it's two guys. The watchmaker, one is a watchmaker and one is uh, that the, the brand is named after. It was a, I think a salesman and he worked for FP Jean in Japan. And they make a very small quantity of watches. But what I like about it is that it's so obscure and so unique. But the styling, they're based on 18th century and 19th century pocket watches. Okay. And if you look at them, uh, you'll like it because of the blue strap and the blue hands. But they are, to me, they are the epitome of what like a dress watch should be. It's 37 millimeters. We have a hand engraved numerals, a hand carved by a, a, a craftsman and then a, um, hand engraved on the moon phase, the stars and the moon. In, Beautiful. B 
bead blasted and then a little um, a brushed uh, section for the hash marks right at the periphery. And it's just so tastefully done, so simple, so beautiful. To me, this is like old money style. You know? It looks a little, the dial looks a little Breguet-ish. Yes, 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 yes. Is that correct? Yeah, because Breguet is the same thing. It's It's inspired by traditional pocket watches right. as well so i mean yeah absolutely i love it i just think the size that the 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 uh, bosom cut uh, if we're gonna quote um the bosom oh cut uh, here we go <laughs> <laughs> now you hear the end of this one uh, yeah the bosom cut uh, moon phase it's so traditional I love the fact that it's a watchmaker and one guy right you know and it, like yeah i love that patek i mean that's really impressive stuff but uh i like the exclusivity of this and in a right. way it's like to me it's even more luxurious because it's the only downside is well aside from the price which is twenty four thousand dollars <laughs> it is still based on the valju i think it's the 7751 which is manual wind um mm -hmm. that is kind of expensive for valju i mean they have modified it decorated it targeted right. it up to the nines so it's not exactly the biggest value prop or whatever the term is. Um, but it is, I just think it's beautiful. I think Very it's, nice. Uh, I could just Very different, it. right? Yeah. I love the moon phase display, the, the yeah. gold. It's like an old, um, what do you call the grandfather clocks or? Yeah. Really evokes the past. I, I love that. Nice. Yeah, I'm just, oh, I want that Very watch. weird, very odd choice for you. Never would have imagined. Really? I thought for sure a big name to fit, fit, to close it out. Yeah, I think I chose it because of it's precisely the opposite. It's like, yeah. you know, you, you're never, ever going to see one of these no. in the wild. That, that was our top ten, right? That was it. My goodness. Oh, wrong. my God. <laughs> I'm going to go have a nap. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go work. I'm going to go work. <laughs> mm. Yeah, right. I better get back to work, too. Okay, well... Uh, there, you, there we are, guys. Please do add your favorites in the comments. Which was your... T if you have the time, please share your top 10. I love hearing that. Uh, also, do check out Mark's channel. I'll leave a link down below. Yay. Thank you. We've got to say a big thank you to Mark for sponsoring today's video, for making it all possible. So thank you, Mark. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to his uh, Instagram. We'll see that. Oh, yeah. Let's pretty get sad. That. Yeah. The, uh, anyway, last time it was... 45,000, so yeah. it hasn't even, eh, it's kind of paltry. Let's get him up to 50. Come on, come on, Yay. guys. Come on. Um, right, well, thank you so much, Mark. Thank, thank you. you. Pleasure. A lot of yeah. fun, as yeah. usual. Good laughs. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, guys, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video, very important. And we will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. Bye.